Coming up on the DMT One to One Show episode 50 on the 5th of March 2014, an interview with Sean McKnight, founder of Roll Music, a company that is about to make its debut at South by Southwest 2014. This week's show is brought to you by Omniphone, the leading B2B cloud music provider powering global music services including Sony Music Unlimited, Guvera, Rara and Sirius XM. Find out more on Omniphone.com and by MusicGraph, the world's first knowledge engine for music, available as a consumer app and as a graph API for developers. Check out MusicGraph.com or developer.musicgraph.com. Hello everyone and welcome to the DMT One to One show and this week it's a real pleasure to welcome Sean McKnight, founder of Roll Music. So hi Sean, how's it going? Yeah, very well, very well. Enjoying the uh, unusual sunshine in London. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's really nice. And, uh, uh, you know, it's a pleasure to have you on. And we've been talking about uh, role uh, music for a little while. Uh, but, uh, of course, uh, your big, uh, you know, pre-launch, uh, essentially, for industry is uh, going to happen next week at South by Southwest. And so I want to hear all about it. But first of all, what is role music? So role music is a, a way to uh, basically for artists to connect directly to fans and for fans to discover new music. And it's based all around what we call roles, which are uh, playlists of eight videos um, packaged up with supplementary content. And that could be anything from uh, web content, lyrics, um, right through to tickets, merchandising, and eventually uh, additional products. And what that enables artists to do is, first of all, to expose their music or the music of people who have influenced them, and then also to make a direct connection to fan and to sell tickets, merchandise, etc., to them, um, and really have that direct relationship. Yeah, and sure. So that's it. It's very, very simple. And great. And so, so the, the, the project spans from Big Motive, which is sort of the, the parent company, I guess, of the project. And so mm -hmm. can you tell me about the process of, of how you got the idea and, and how it got started? Yeah, sure. Um, so Big Motive uh, make apps and websites for clients, so people like BBC, Channel 4, net a -Porte, National Trust, etc. And we've been working in that kind of intersection between uh, video and mobile for a long, long time. Um, we've also been working on music as well for quite a long time as well. And basically, we saw this uh, problem um, occurring again and again, where actually finding video was very, very difficult. Yeah. And what we wanted to do was to make that much easier and over time we really alighted on this idea of using music because that seemed to be one of the biggest areas obviously for online video yeah. um, but also one of the areas where people were coming back to us around the problem of music discovery and yeah. um, the whole world of music has become a numbers game really it's all about the number of tracks and streaming and uh, computerized recommendations and basically wanted, we wanted to take it back and provide people with uh, recommendations directly from uh, people in the know. So that means artists, DJs, blogs, bands, etc. Um, and that's really the genesis of Roll and how it came out of Big Motive. Yeah, that's great. And how long did it take to, to build? Uh, it's taken on and off. We've been through our iterations, the, um, the, the usual pivots. Uh, but on and off, it's taken about three months um, to get us to this awesome. stage. Um, so we're going into the App Store um, for a, rela a release on the, uh, of the beta version on the 10th of March. Great. And the aim then is to attract uh, artists and DJs, um, magazines, bloggers, etc. Um, on board. We've already got about 200 of those uh, so far. Yeah. Um, so they're a mix of emerging artists, uh, smaller labels. Um, but we've also got a couple of big names on there as well. Yeah. Um, which obviously kind of helps to create a gravitational pull. But you know, to be honest, we're really interested in you know giving a platform for for smaller unsigned artists and for labels that are doing new and interesting stuff. Absolutely. And so looking at the app, uh, how it is, and so essentially you you have uh, uh, a series of curated short playlists, which are the roles, essentially, mm -hmm. and uh, users can navigate through them via this uh, kind of quite fun uh, uh, rolling interface uh, that, that you've developed. Uh, and there's uh, six clips, right, per, per role? Uh, there's eight clips per eight role. Eight clips per role, right. Um, so essentially the top half of the screen, the screen is the videos, so they're a roll of eight videos, hence yeah. the name. Um, and the bottom half of the screen is everything from commenting, social media feeds, uh, pulls from web pages, uh, lyrics, notes, um, and then eventually what we'll build in over time, and this is what we want to test with artists and bands and labels, um, we'll start to pull in things like commerce and merchandising and tickets and event listings and so on. And um, so really trying to deepen the experience of and discovering music, and um, I mean, what we what we recognized very quickly was that music isn't just sound. Um, yeah. Music is about understanding the context, 
Um, and one of the guys who is advising us uh, was a senior uh, exec at Island Records. And he said to us uh, very early on when we were explaining the concept, and he said, yeah, it's a little bit like Desert Island Discs. Um, and we kind of thought, well, whoa, hold on a second. You know, this, that's, that's not what it is at all. But actually, when you think about it, um, there's a lot of that in it. Yeah. Uh, Desert Island Discs is a curated playlist chosen by someone whose opinion you respect, either because they know a lot about music or because they've had an interesting life. And they explain and put in context uh, songs that perhaps you've heard many times before. And it gives more meaning and enhances the enjoyment of that particular record, of that particular track. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so uh, looking at, uh, uh, of course, the uh, South by Southwest uh, uh, launch, essentially, you've uh, partnered with uh, uh, UKTI, which is uh, for the benefit of people that are not from the UK. It's a UK trade and investment organization uh, yes. to do a rollout uh, in, in partnership with the British uh, embassy, which is essentially a venue that's uh, going to that's uh, established the South by Southwest has been there for, for a number of years uh, where uh, you know there's a bunch of uh, British artists and a bunch of uh, uh, meetings with British businesses. So how did that come about and what are you going to do there? Um, really we built up a pretty um, decent network of people which is how it came about. Um, UK Trade and Investment very kindly invited us on board um, to become the app that they are using um, to promote UK music starting with South by Southwest. Um, as you mentioned, we're at the British Music Embassy, which is a, a venue that they have uh, 12 parties across the whole of South by Southwest. Um, and they are pr promoting the artists uh, at South by Southwest, and they're using Roll as an integral part of that. That's um, so that's obviously um, pretty important. That's so essentially, amazing. with that, you have roles for each gig with the artists that are playing, right? Exa exactly. So there are 12 roles, one per uh, one per party yeah um, and then some of the artists not all of them yet but some of the artists have created their own roles on the back of that and um, so for example you have the each party is sponsored by someone different so one is by NME another one's by BB, BBC introducing there's some by uh, industry bodies like um, PPL and BPI um, and you know then there's regional things like Creative Scotland or Creative sure. Belfast um, and it's it's been for a pretty interesting mix. Um, we've got Hugh Stevens from Radio One on there as well. Right. Um, so yeah, we've got some pretty pretty decent people on board. That's awesome. And so, of course, you know, for the benefit of anybody going to South by, that's a good way to explore uh, from the tenth. Uh, so they won't, they won't have much time, but from the tenth, uh, it's a good way to explore the lineup of South by Southwest of the British Embassy. And also for people that are not there, uh, they can go and check out what kind of acts are playing. And uh, exactly. uh, talking about uh, you know the. Uh, importance of South by as an event you know do you feel like that's a good platform for you guys to to start getting some some traction also outside of of the UK and with bloggers and uh, magazines uh, uh, around the US for example yeah I mean I think South by has become a pretty international you know it's held in Austin Texas uh, but it's obviously a pretty international um, event overall yeah. and there's people from all over the world there yeah. um, it, it's it's a great one for us because there's the transition day, which is on Monday the tenth, which is the day that yeah. we're launching, and that's at the intersection of music and technology, and that's kind of where we are, and it sort of made a lot of sense for us to be there. Yeah, um, so yeah, it's a it's a great event, and yeah, I think it'll be a lot of fun as well. So yeah. I'm looking forward to it very much. <laughs> now that should be fantastic. And so uh, looking forward to the development of the app. Uh, what is the one thing that you know you you're, you're dying to have on the app, but you haven't managed quite to get there on, on there yet? Oh, so many things, so many <laughs> things. Um, I mean, th this is the, uh, this is the, the, the eternal uh, problem. We got a huge list of additional features that we want to we put in there. But, you know, we got to get them in front of artists um, and really test, you know, which ones they want, which ones they're going to find useful. Yeah. Um, you know, and that is the purpose of us launching at South by Southwest, running for a couple of months and then doing a consumer launch uh, in the summer so that we have a product that, that is first and foremost built for artists, built for labels, uh, built for bloggers, yeah. um, with features that they find useful. Exactly. Um, if, they, if they don't find it useful, it's not going to be any good. It's as simple as that. Exactly. And th that's one thing that is also important to, to point out, the fact that uh, I, I know that because of the importance that curation is, is uh, uh, taking this year, it feels like there's a lot of demand for curated playlists by bloggers, by magazines. And so, of course, uh, the, the question mark for any company that's working in this space is actually to try and give some value back to those bloggers and to those uh, magazines in order to motivate them to actually use the app. Otherwise, it just feels like uh, it's a one-way street, right? Yeah, I mean, dig we're, we're very, very excited about digital music. We're very excited by, you know, all the famous services like Spotify and so on. Um, however, 
this is kind of an inevitable reaction, the reaction of curation and the reaction that artists are having towards the bigger music services. Um, you know, it has felt like, as you say, a little bit of a one-way street. Um, you know, it's felt like, you know, too much taking and, and not enough giving. And I think that is starting to reverse. I think you're starting to see some changes in terms of the revenue models yeah. um, that are being introduced. Um, but it's certainly got a long way to go. Um, and really what we're trying to provide is a platform um, that is, is attractive and provides a showcase for artists and labels to showcase their music, uh, to reach out to fans directly, and then, if they so choose, to start to transact uh, with those fans. Yeah. Um, and of course, we've got to make sure that you know, it doesn't become overbearing. It's not uh, simply an advertising platform. It's very unlikely, actually, that we'll ever have display advertising on there, um, basically because it, it gets in the way. Um, it doesn't really work, and to be t absolutely honest, it's not particularly profitable. Yeah, yeah, and so of course uh, you were talking about uh, earlier about the opportunity to integrate merchandising and ticketing and stuff like that, and that's probably where the the most uh, intense monetization as aspects are going to happen for the for the app, right? Absolutely, absolutely, and you know you provide people with things that are relevant um, to their overall experience. Um, it, it it works, and it works particularly well for music. Not all genres of music, I must admit, um, but for a lot of genres of music, people want to you know, buy products um, that are related to the music that they're listening to, you know, whether that's uh, fashion or things that are more obvious like tickets and merch. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Sean, it was a real pleasure. And of course, uh, unfortunately, I haven't quite got to the point yet where I can do live demos of apps during interviews. That's something that okay, I would love okay. to do in the future, but I can't do it quite yet. So I think the viewers are going to have to uh, be content with our description of the app, but uh, it's uh, definitely worth going checking it out. Uh, it's a uh, uh, role music uh, uh, on the App Store, of course. Yep. You can also check out uh, watchroll.tv and you're going to have a web player as well. It's not just a mobile app. Absolutely. I mean, one of the things we wanted to do was to make sure that it was as easy as possible to share this with as many people as possible. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a web app. It's going to be a desktop web version um, so that you know, when an artist sends a tweet, everyone can watch it. Awesome. And the show is going to go live, I think, this Friday. So can users uh, already download an, the older version of, uh, of Roll TV? Do they have to wait? Yeah, yeah, there's an old version that we've got on the App Store. Um, yeah. but it's pretty raggedy, but you know, you, by, by all means, go on there, but be gentle. Um, but it, it's the same one that's going to get updated on, on, on the 10th, right? So. It's the same one that's going to get updated okay. on the 10th. So if you download it now, you'll be, uh, you'll be given the update uh, on the 10th. That's, it. that's great. Awesome. Well, so if, if anybody from the UK wants to download it before they head to South by and get those uh, horrible uh, data uh, 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 charges, then they can do that first. <laughs> so fantastic. Well, uh, Sean, it was a real pleasure talking to you. And again, it's Watch Roll TV or Roll Music on the App Store. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Bye bye. And thanks so much for listening to the DMT One to One show. We record every week. And also check out digitalmusictrends.com for our weekly news show. Thanks so much for listening. Have a great week. And until next time.